AM 600 KIVA 93.7 FM, the web, the app, rockoftalk.com. Glad to be here with you for another kickoff to a super Saturday. My good friends, the number one realtors here in the market, Tico and Tracy Venturi. You can find them directly at welcomehomeabq.com or why not just go ahead and uh, dial them direct, 448-8888. That's 448-8888. Or as always, welcomehomeabq.com. That's welcomehomeabq.com. There they are, folks. Tico and Tracy, good morning. Good morning, Eddie. Another Hi. another beautiful day here in New Mexico and gosh, so much going on. So anyway, if you're just tuning in, you, you're here, you're going to learn about what's going on with real estate in Albuquerque, right? Uh, which we do every Saturday. Which we do every Saturday. So if you want to be the most informed person about with what's going on in real estate in Albuquerque, you're at the right place. Totally. Absolutely. Tigo is always talking about the topics as well as Tracy always featuring the new homes and doing the most transactions uh, in the market. This week's edition, buying new versus existing, the pros and the cons, I'll have that information. New construction, sales booming. Well, uh, Tigo, I want to thank you for being on the radio show uh, this week and talking about the uh, lack of supply. Folks, there's never been a better time to sell your home. All you have to do is pick up the phone and dial direct. 448-8888, buyer demand remains very strong. This has been the strongest market for homes in our lifetimes, folks. And I'm talking about going back 100 years. We'll also talk about in the news, refinance fees, brand new coming at the beginning of September. They'll tell you all about that. Quarter two home price index released, and it's a really good time to sell. And the featured homes of the week, Tigo, Tracy, take it away. I want to start right there on the uh, featured homes. I okay. know we always throw it in when we're running out of time, but we yeah. have a house that's gonna be coming and i just want to give a quick is that price right quick tease about it this is a different house oh, okay so we have one that's not quite ready it'll be uh probably almost two weeks before okay. it will be so i can't be too specific but it's got an amazing swimming pool and outdoor living area covered cabana covered deck overlooking sort of towards the air force you, base you told me about that house after your appointment with yeah. with the, those folks and you were just raving about it, how, you know, we see a lot of homes in our business, right, Tracy? And and sometimes you just go, oh my gosh, this is... This is a property people are going to love. It's a four-bedroom house with a very large, like, family gathering room in addition to the regular living areas. Uh, but the outdoor living space is pretty over the top. And it's going to be, I think, 385000 Uh Supper Rockish area, which is just north of I-40 and just east of Tramway. So a lot of people who travel to the base, um, you know, north, labs. North of I-40, east of East Tram of Tramway. Okay, got it. Yep. So it's foothills. Just, just, yeah, foothills south, basically. Yeah, okay. Um, but the outdoor living is pretty phenomenal. The house is great. Four bedrooms, you can't ask for more. It also has side yard parking, so you could park an RV and a boat or extra vehicles it's got lots of room for parking it's got a circular drive in front and then the garage is sort of so, got extra parking so anyway i wanted to mention that one okay got um it. two others yeah. that are coming soon 11205 king railroad well, that's southwest what I just said. is that price right you, i haven't it is. i hadn't seen this come through yeah. at least in my part of the business yet so yeah um what it's um active oh now yeah and it's 165 yeah, you know the, the the point I'm making is we don't see a lot of moving ready homes for 165 in Albuquerque these days. Right, and this house is a three bedroom, two bath, two car garage built in 2002 by Centex Homes. Uh, it's very close to I-40. It's just a little bit south of um, the freeway, so it's pretty quick if you need to get to I-40. Okay. It's not uh, way far southwest South, house southwest heights yep. it's it's closer in so mm -hmm. that one's great um another one that's open today 7951 burkett avenue uh this is in the 87120 zip code and it's just north of i-40 okay. um west of coors east of unser yep so kind of the ladera area you know that part of town right now if you look at statistically that that what we call area 120 that's kind of realtor lingo but but that part of town 87120 zip code is 
really the the hottest market in Albuquerque right now from a supply demand ratio, you know, ratio standpoint. Yeah, yeah. Maybe statistically, but I think every part of town is pretty in well, demand right now. No doubt about it. We will. We'll, yeah, I'm we'll, sure we'll, you've got we'll, a stat. Without for that. a doubt, we're going to talk about. Some I bet of that. you have a stat. Let I've me finish talking for, about. Okay, okay, okay. Seventy nine fifty one Burkett Avenue Northwest. So it's uh, just over 2,000 square feet, uh, 245,000 open house today, Saturday, from 1 to 3. Got it. So you're welcome to come by. Just uh, bring your mask. They try not to have too many people in the house at once, of yeah. course. Um, but uh, 1 to 3, Saturday, your opportunity to see that house. Um, so, Tigo, I bet you... So that's it. Like, you, you just come in, you give homes of the week, and... Okay, and I'm then, out. No, Bye. no, you're not. we got a lot to talk about. So, uh, a cu- couple topics just going we back. We always get to them last. Oh, and, I know, you know, I know. It's like... Well, in, in you know, I mean, obviously, we want to feature, you know, the, the folks that are, are working with us. We want to feature their homes, get the word out right. there. Obviously, we're in a very hot market. Um, and honestly, you know that's part of the beauty of listing your home for sale with us is we can feature them here on the radio and get extra exposure for course, our home sellers, of course. right? Top dollar. Yeah. You know, that's the idea. You know, the thing that's interesting, it's uh, the the way the market is right now that it, that it's so busy, homes are selling so fast that y- you would think, well, you know, we just got to put a sign in the yard and it'll sell. And that's true, right? Put a sign in the yard and it could sell. No, you're, you're shaking your head. No. The truth is it can sell. The the reality is, though, you're not going to get top dollar that way. No. You know, no. you still have to do the merchandising. You still have to do the marketing. You still have to do the professional photography. You still have to get the home ready in top showing condition, move in ready condition, right? And buyers are still very price sensitive. You know, we do have people getting multiple offers on homes regularly. Um, however, those are the homes that are priced for the condition for the area, right? Right, right. So... Well, in, in 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 speaking to that one stat that jumped out at me this week, Tracy, I've got it here in front of me. Um, there's something we we always look at, Tracy, over the years. It's called uh, percent of list price, right? So it's the the actual final sale price as Compared. a percentage of the, the the list price. And over the years, what would you say? I mean, you usually you, we 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 were seeing ninety six to ninety seven percent. So right. like a discount of maybe three percent mm-hmm. off list price was yep. pretty typical um, in the last few years. You know what it hit this month? I want to know. A hundred percent. Really? Yeah. Which means some were uh, over, some were under. Some were over, some were under. So average percent of list price. I've never seen it in the what, 15 years I've been doing this, I've never seen it at 100%, which means that that um, w- we know that, right? We know homes are selling over list price. And and we're, we're, that gets in a whole issue with appraisals, but we're not going to go there right now. But yeah, s- we, should, but... We, we, we should, but we should. But it's just one other thing you need to be aware of and, and have a good uh, realtor advisor helping you if you're listing your home. Again, that's one more hurdle that's an important thing to understand. And it could create some issues and actually take some money out of your pocket if it isn't handled properly. And in the issue is the appraisers, it is what it is. There's not a lot you can do about it in some cases. Right. But, but how we negotiate a, a contract on a house can make a huge difference, right? Right. And how we structure, if we need to counter something, how we structure it to help protect our sellers and cover our buyers. So, Tracy, there was a story this week about new construction. And the, the there were a couple of big headlines, but uh, let me find it here. Um, the National Association of Home Builders, they put out their stats, uh, uh, and they saw the biggest move in uh, new construction home sales ever for the month of, was it June or July are we July. looking at? July. Yeah, for July. In July. Yeah, and we know that just, and that was nationally. Here Albuquerque, we know new construction is booming, right? Right. We and do. and then we 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 put out a story the other day and it was you know should I buy new or should I buy existing so I just wanted to dig into that a little bit Tracy and and give some people some thoughts on that because there's there's pros and cons of both right and I think the the most obvious one which I can speak to is the cost I ran some data and this is 
you know, you, you got to take it with a grain of salt because, you know, we, we can't look at everything. But, and a but, lot but of in, the new homes that are selling are not in our multiple listing service. Exactly, exactly. A and lot of them just never get there. They never make it, yeah. So, But what I found is about a 13% uh, higher price per square foot for new construction versus existing. And that sounds that sounds probably about right. Yeah, there's a, a premium for new. The cost to build it's gone up over the last few years compared so we'll call to previous. That, would we call it a negative? Of course, it costs more. I wouldn't call it a negative. Okay. And you know why? Why? So maybe you pay 13% more for brand new construction. Okay. You're probably going to have lower utility bills every month because that house is going to be built so much more energy efficient than a house even 10 years ago. True. Right? The insulation is going to be better. The uh, HVAC system's probably going to be higher efficiency. Mm -hmm. Even if the builder isn't building to green certified, they're probably building green. Well, most of them are, aren't they? They're not getting they the are, certification. They are, but some but of them get certified and some don't. And it's yeah. you know, an, ex an expense they have to pass along to the new buyer. But, but even the building code construction standards, exactly. even the, the bare minimum... Is much higher it's green right much yeah. higher than even again like you right. said 10 you're years ago you're just not ago. getting it certified and the other thing is so it's so you're saying you just to wrap this up just to say okay you're paying 13 15 20 percent more for new I'm construction not ready to wrap it up no uh, but my point is you're saying you you're over the years you you may be making that up with absolutely not just in utility bills mm -hmm. um but you know, you're going to get a new house. How many years is it going to be before you need a new water heater, a new furnace, a new roof? You're probably 15 years out. A new kitchen remodel. Before you're going to have <laughs> expenses. That's, where a, that's an inside joke we got to share. We're Tracy and I are remodeling our kitchen right now. So yeah, it was going to be a small little project. Yeah, yeah. Twenty, you know, we've been in the same house what nineteen years now. Yeah, and and it was time. And so yes, yeah, so, I mean that's a good point, right? You're not going to be doing those updates and those remodels right. and all the you know the the you might do a preventive few maintenance that you're going to do on an older house. Preventive maintenance and replacement, right? Not just updating it, but you know, water heaters. I should say something. I should say something that's important that I say this because we've seen houses where people have moved in and I'm, I'm not picking on anybody here. I'm just saying this happens. They buy a brand new house. Are you picking on me? No, I'm not picking on you. I'm not picking on anybody. I'm just saying they buy a brand new house. We saw this especially back in the day when people were qualifying for loans with very little uh, skin in the game. They move into a new house and they move into a new house and that's it. They never do any preventive maintenance. And so I, I just wanted to clarify, I'm not saying new homes don't need preventive maintenance. You got to still take care of your home, but it's a lot less than an existing home. Right. The appliances are new. The yeah. new systems are new. Yes. The roof is new. Yes. Um, so, so yeah, it might be a 13% higher to go. And over most and home builders offer what kind of warranty? They offer what, at least one year? They do one week. They call it bumper to bumper. Most of them one yeah. year, kind of everything. And then two years and then 10 years structural. Yeah. And then um, some builders will do a 210 or they'll buy it extra. But if, if you're a builder out there listening to us and we're getting this wrong, sorry. The point is, <laughs> it, it, you know, you're, you're well, it's we like. We close <laughs> enough of them to see what should, they do. We should but. know. Yeah, I know. I know. I just uh, so 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 that's great. So it costs more, but you're getting more. Now, the other, I, I would say, downside is you're going to be limited to the neighborhood, right? We, right. Don't, we don't have new construction neighborhoods going up in the middle of the Northeast Heights right now. It's, There's it's a few new home communities, but they're very, very they're limited numbers. So Las Ventanas Homes built some townhomes up off a of tramway. I believe there's still one or two left. Well, Abrazo you know, developed that Ab thing up at Brazo. the top of, of Paseo, right? Yep. And there's three builders in there, right? Yep. Uh, Scott Patrick, maybe, yep. Abrazo, Las yeah. Ventanas. I'm not sure who's yeah, building, but there's that neighborhood. Yep. Pulte had the big neighborhood right by the new... Okay, um, so, so but but at, at, but how much did Alameda. those homes cost? That, that house that Abrazo's building there versus building out... In Rio Rancho, for example, not picking on Rio Rancho, I'm just saying there's going to be a hundred thousand dollar difference in the exact same house, right? Um, I'm sure there is, but think of the land cost. Think of what well, it I costs know. to develop that land at Tramway and Paseo, right? 
um, and and get it ready and put in infrastructure. It was it was going to cost a lot, but there are some new homes around the city, some infill, yeah. but most of them are Volterra, which is by the Air Force Base at the very south end of Wantabo. There's lots of opportunity there. Great builders, master plan, master plan community. It's not just a little infill. I mean, infills are great. However, you know these master plan communities like that, or a Cabazon, or or give me some other examples. Uh, Loma, Colorado. Yeah, Loma, Colorado. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so Tigo, the the thing is, you know, yeah, when you think new homes and you see ads for Dr. Horton and Pulte and the big big players, everyone says, oh, they're out in Rio Rancho or they're on the west side. And that is the bulk of them. Yeah. But there are new home opportunities. And then there are custom builders that are, you know, some of them are small time local builders that build, you know, 10 houses a year or something that if you find a lot that's infill, you can have them build that new home for yeah. you. Yeah, that, that's another. So, so a, another a challenge that we're seeing right now, Tracy, is, you know, if I want a new home, because I realize I need a home with an office and I need a place to be able to teach the kids and all the stuff that's, that's, you know, come high on everybody's list, more room, bigger yard, all those things that people are prioritizing because of, of the pandemic. Um, and they want to get it like next, you know, close in 30 days for new construction. That could be a challenge right now, right? It is a bit of a challenge. There are, um, they, they've all been really busy, the DR Hortons and, Abrazos and Pultis uh, have been busy and a lot of them are, you know, we go and we find a lot and pick the floor plan and pick your your features and we have it built. And, you know, six to eight, nine months later, you get to move into your new home. Well, one of the stats I saw, Tracy, this week was a lot of the, the homes that, you know, the, this surge in, in new home sales, a lot of them were, quote, bought off the plan, as they say, meaning Meaning they basically Client picked the plan, picked the lot, and had it and, built. And what what are home builders quoting? Let's say a production builder like a like a Pulte. What are they quoting or a Brazo lead time? Um, I know that most of them are in the six to nine month range right now. It used to be like they'd say five months. Yeah. Depending on how fast somebody went to their design center and picked out mm -hmm. their granite or their flooring or whatever um, but it's more like six to nine months right now but there are builders that do have homes ready to go I get emails every day from our partners that um, work at different sales offices and you know Jarrett who's on our team is just a new home expert and so he brings all of that to us every week at our team meetings but um, you know they have new homes in storm cloud there's new homes on the ground in Las Lunas there's new homes on the ground in Mesa del Sol, just south of the airport in UNM. A lot of people love that if they work on base or downtown or go to UNM or work in that area, the hospitals. Um, and then, you know, there's some in um, Volterra and then, yes, West Side and Rio Rancho. So let me, let me, you know, I was on with um, Walt Arnold and, I know, I and Eddie the, to you the other night um, on during Eddie's show at the six on the six o'clock hour, and we were just talking about kind of what's going on in commercial versus residential here in Albuquerque. And Walter, Walter, Walt was talking about um, this phenomenon of what was it, suburban office, and that there's you know one of the challenges commercial has in albuquerque right now and, and walt will speak to this is like downtown there's a lot of vacancies for office space however if that office space was in a suburban area like a mesa del sol or somewhere on the west side they'd probably be able to rent it up because there, there's this kind of trend to bring office space closer to where people live instead of having a central downtown hmm. district. And that's that's kind of more of a nationwide uh, trend, but it was an interesting thing to think about. And you think about how Mesa del Sol was developed, and that was the entire concept from the right. beginning. Bring was, the employers there, bring yeah. the restaurants, bring the groceries. Bring the jobs there. Right build the houses, but bring the jobs first. Don't build the houses and then hope that the jobs come. It's like bring the jobs first. And Mesa it, del Sol has huge amounts of land oh, to yeah. just keep building. So we know it, it's going to continue to grow. So that's, that's you know, we're talking about this this whole housing inventory shortage issue. We've been talking about this a lot now. And, and literally, we really do have a housing shortage in Albuquerque right now. Not just in for sale, but also in rentals. We, yep. we hear that all the time. Now, we don't deal in rentals, but obviously we hear about it. 
you know, we own our own rentals and, and we hear cases all the time of somebody putting something for, for rent, a house in particular, and they've got people lined up that are, you know, literally bidding wars on rental properties, which is interesting. So we have a housing shortage issue in Albuquerque. And, and, and of course, everybody's going to say, well, look, there's this, all this land all around us just sitting vacant. Let's just go build houses. The, the challenge is, and we talked about this the other night, um, um, Tuesday, was it takes... And if you, if you talk to a builder right now, he, to, for them to, to purchase a lot to build a house on, ready to go, you know, somebody's develop it, they put in all the services, curb, gutter, street, utilities, the whole thing, that lot's going to cost them sixty to $70,000 just depending on where it is, right? And you, the, the other challenge is like, okay, we need all these homes and we need it now and we need affordable homes and we need them now. Well, it's going to take you two years if, from, if you start from zero and you go get a big piece of land and you want to build out a master plan community. That's going to take a couple of years. Probably more than two. And it's going to cost by that, you know, and in that point, it's going to be more than sixty or $70,000 per lot. And you just can't build, quote, affordable housing on a sixty or $70,000 lot. You just can't do it. Right. Which reminds me i didn't mention twilight homes they're yes. building here too and they have some houses ready to go as well last i checked so yeah it just dawned on me our buddy doug yeah doug over at twilight yeah so you know you know that there's um it, it's an interesting place you know and eddie asked challenged me the other night and said well where are the opportunities i'm like gosh where are the opportunities and I think right now the opportunities are for for home sellers that that are are ready to do something different. Yeah. And 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 that's you know one of the the, the things I highlighted is here. Uh, there's it, it is a great time to sell, and I don't think I don't think the word is out there that people people think oh you know there's it's not a good time to sell. I shouldn't be selling right now because of COVID or COVID something. or whatever, right? But. I mean, from a from a time on market, your net proceeds from your sale, the you know so, everything is just a great time to sell. So let me tell you, tell you, you know, remind you that our guaranteed sale program mm -hmm. has been a great one for clients that want to sell but don't want to um, sell their house before they know where they're moving. True. So a lot of times yep. we can help you find a house and then guarantee that your house that you're living in or own right now and want to sell will be sold in time for you to close on your other house. And if it doesn't sell, then we will buy it to make sure you can move forward confidently on your new home. And that program has worked really well. I mean, that's what it's designed for. We do it a lot of times with the new home builders yep. where we have a client who wants to sell their existing home and buy new and the construction isn't going to be done for six to nine months. And um, the new home builder doesn't really want to build that house just to your specs and, until you sell your house, which would mean you'd need to move and rent until your house you're building is done. Or do a lease back or, or something like back. that. Yeah, there's there's a lot of different ways. So we've done situations where either-, either We have our... a client closing in September, mm -hmm. um, just wanted us to buy their house so they could move forward with buying a new home. And they've waited since the beginning of the year. I think it was maybe March, February, mm -hmm. they put that house under contract and it's gonna be closing in uh, mid-September. And we were able to buy their house from them, lease it back, so this whole time they knew confidently they could you know, yeah. close on their new home. So we have lots of options like that because we do the quick sale where if you just want an offer, right? Yep. We can make you an offer. Well, let's speak to that. that it, I, I, I want to get to this story about the refinance fee because it's a pretty pretty big important thing. But let's talk about that, Tracy. I just got uh, certified for the iBuyer program here in New Mexico, and iBuyer is kind of a it's an it's a real estate term. And what the iBuyer really means it's a a person that's willing to just you know make you an offer on your home um, immediately. Basically, it's an instant sale or quick sale. Uh, I, I don't, I don't like the, the <laughs> it's not the, we buy ugly houses type thing. It's not the signs on a telephone pole and, and that I mean, says I buy fine. houses. There's a market for that, right? Those are, those are people that are looking to buy homes that, that need work and people are just looking to get rid of them and they're going to go in there, fix them up and, 
and you know make them look pretty, add some value, and resell them. And it's them not necessarily them. that the house isn't good. It's just somebody wants it sold quickly, and they're willing to take half of what the house is worth to get it done without calling us first to find out, you know, what may be better. For right, them. you're talking about that. Okay, that's a different thing. Right? No, we're not talking. No, it's not half, but yeah, it's going to yes. be a discounted price. So the, the the program we have available now here in Albuquerque is. It's called the iFinder program. It allows um, a person that wants to sell their home. Maybe they don't. They, they just got to get it sold. They need a. They need a guaranteed closing date. They don't want to show it. They don't want people tromping through their home, right? They just want to get an offer. They want to know what their net's going to be so they can move on to whatever the next stage of their life is. Think of it this way. Think of it as bringing your car to CarMax. And CarMax gives you a guaranteed price. You know it's going to be a little bit lower than if you were, you know, go park it on the side of the road or put it in Auto Trader and get it detailed yourself and do all that stuff and get it ready, right? You're going to net more if you do that. Same thing. The traditional sale, you're always going to net more, but this gives you the flexibility to take a quick cash offer and but, move on and and the logistics of that which i haven't heard yet and correct me if i'm wrong are they list the house with us and we get it out to all these different investors correct we have a can, we have a pool of uh, investors that we send it out to so we come in sorry to interrupt you but just said yeah, so you know we would come in we would get the basic information about the home you know just like we're listing a home we basically get the details about the home we take photographs and then the information about the home, the photographs, they go out to this pool of investors. I think there's a dozen of them here. These, some of them are institutional investors, some of them are solo individual investors, but they're all experienced investors. The only people that are in this pool are people that actually know what they're doing. <laughs> um, either, these are real people, and if they don't, you know, if, if one of the investors in this group were to like not fulfill their agreement and not close on a deal or something, they get kicked out, right? No, th these are these are the real these are real deal people. Um, and so we send it out to that group, and then we get offers and we bring them to you. Right, and you can say yes or no, and we can continue to put it in MLS and market it the normal way. The normal way, so we can get those offers and market it right traditional way. So it's a great option. So Tigo, let's get to this. Uh, topic since we're getting close here. So there was a big uproar here, f I guess it's been a couple of weeks now, where the Fannie and Freddie were going to add an additional uh, 50 basis points or half a percent to the cost of selling the loan to them. And so when, when Fannie and Freddie, you know, buy loans, they charge a fee to the lender, right? And they just out of the blue said, we're going to, we're going to charge you a half a point more. Extra. Yep. Uh, 50 bips, as they say. So, for example, on a $200,000 house, that's going to be $1,000. Or a $200,000 loan, that's going to be $1,000. And that's a cost. It's just an upfront cost. Caused a huge uproar in the realtor and lending community, in particular mortgage community. Because it was going to go into effect right away, practically. September 1st. September 1st. Yeah, it was like they gave all them. All these loans in the process that were going to immediately have that extra fee on them that people hadn't accounted for. Exactly. And, you know, most lenders weren't going to pass it on to their clients. They, they've already locked in the rates with their clients. They can't just go back and say, oh, by the way, it's going to cost you this much more. So um, with a lot of a lot of work in the background, they've now po postponed that till December 1st. Huh. So it gives people a little bit of time now to get these loans through the pipeline and and make sure it's built in built in up front for. exactly exactly so that's that's good for people that want to refinance it's it's particularly good for people that um you know want to stay in their homes and they've been kind of not sure about refinancing didn't know what to do but again refinance you know we, we're in a refinance boom needless to say the refinance uh, applications pulled back last week after that announcement happened um, but now it's time to get them lo locked and closed before December 1st, again, but hopefully it'll be pushed back again, but you never know. We're still sub 3% on um, interest Refi. rates. Yep. In, and interest. In interest. De depends money. on, yeah, on the, on the money. I mean, if you do a cash out refi, it's going to cost you about a quarter more 
than a than a regular uh, just standard you know princ principal refi. But there's some there's some definite savings there, and if you plan to be in your home for you know at least a year and a half or two years or more, you should be doing it if you're over say three seven five four percent for sure. So. Yep. Yep. Interesting times, aren't they? We've always got so much to, to chat about. Um, it's it's a busy real estate weekend. We've got all sorts of people who have, you know, been, what, a week and a half, two weeks into being homeschooling yep. children and figuring out how to how to navigate back to school. We have a, many on our team that are in the same, you know, predicament where yep. they're trying to work with buyers and sellers and also homeschool. And and it's interesting because we've seen a lot of the setups of how people are adjusting their home life. Okay, I got to tell you, because I was in Eddie's studio last week. You haven't been there, but Eddie's got some uh, old St. Pius desks in his studio. So he's holding uh, he's holding uh, class right there, right? I have Khan Academy and my kids are utilizing it. They went back to school. Uh, my kids are like one of the few that have gone uh, full time back, and this is a parochial awesome. uh, school. But uh, yeah. we got that for fourth grade math, and my kids in the third grade, and I basically pay them for every thousand points they get a buck. So, ooh, uh, I like that. I love Khan Academy too. They they were a great resource for our kids when they needed yep. extra help. Yep. School schooling is going to change after this, but that's a whole different conversation. Hopefully for the better. I think it will be for the better. Yeah. You go to Tracy are the best. And all you have to do is pick up the phone and give them a call. 448 8888. That's 448 8888. Welcome home, That's welcome.